We're all mem giving them an out bottom line. This is the bottom line. Okay. Omer Rav Omer Rav Nachman. Omer Lishnaim Tzu Vikich Lewis Aisho. Person says to two people, I want you to marry a woman on my behalf. Heinein Shluchov Heinein Edov. These two people are his agents, and they could be the witnesses on the act of marriage. Meaning afterwards, they could be the witnesses on the marriage, and they believe to say that we actually fulfilled your dictate, and they, they were able to testify the woman is married. Why? Because we married her, as you instructed us to. V'chein begershin. Two women, two people are given a get, deliver the get to my wife, and let's say, we're talking about the, the, there are no witnesses on the get. And if you're of the opinion, we mentioned Eidi Messiah Karsi, that the get has to be delivered in the presence of witness. So, the agent who's giving the get to the woman, he himself is the witness on the transfer of the get from himself to the woman, and he's representing, they represent the husband, based on the principle of shlichus, and afterwards they testify, we delivered the get. They believed. The same thing is in, in regard to monetary situations. What's man? Two people are instructed by the borrower, take this amount of money, paid my debt to the lender. They are the witnesses and they are the what? And they are the, the witnesses that what? That the money was given and the debt was paid. So there's a question which is asked over here. In terms of marriage, you cannot marry an, a, a, a woman on someone else's behalf unless the Torah introduces the concept of shlichus. Because the Torah says, kikach ish isha. The husband must perform the act of marriage. In terms of gitten, right, divorce, the husband must give the get the hu to the wife. So unless we have a principle of shlichus, of agency, the agent is not the husband. But what about paying a debt? What about if you put money in the mail and you send registered letter, the borrower sends the amount of money he owes to, to the lender, and the lender receives it. Is the debt paid? There's no agency. As long as the lender receives the money, the debt is satisfied, correct? So over here, it says if you point to agents to, the, to pay the debt, the borrower to the lender, the agents could be the witnesses. What is that? This has no relevance to agency. In, in the words of, of the Achron, it's a maizakov. It's like a monkey. You send a monkey to deliver the, the parcel with the money to pay the debt. The debt is paid. Marriage and, and, and divorce cannot be unless you are the equivalent of the husband. But paying a debt is receiving, receiving the money to satisfy the debt. No, but it says, The agents could be the, before we had an argument, Shlich Maseid, Shlich Maseid. Right? Is, could the agent be the witness? Could the agent not be the witness? This has nothing to do with agency. Mom, right, moment. Right? If you ask me to purchase something on your behalf, so my purchase is your purchase. But he was talking about paying a debt. Paying a debt is not a purchase. It's satisfying so as long as the lender l receives the money. So, and now the test line, they receive the money. So they, 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 they say something interesting. They say, what happens if the, lender, the borrower wants to pay the lender and the lender says, I don't want to take the money. I'm, I'm preoccupied. I'm preoccupied. And he puts the money down and walks away. He, he, he satisfied the debt. But if I have an obligation you are, and I want to pay the debt, you have an obligation. You can't tell me you're preoccupied. I have no t time at this moment to deal with you. But let's say a third party wants to give the money on behalf of the, of the, of, of, of the borrower. Right? And he, uh, there wouldn't be a law of agency. He's not the agent. Right? You cannot impose yourself on, that, on, on, the, on the lender at that moment. If you're the borrower, the borrower is the debtor, he can impose himself. I'm, I want to relieve myself of, of, this, of this debt. But if it's a third party, he cannot impose himself. So therefore, it has relevance to agency. So because he is, they were appointed to be the agents, they are the equivalent of the borrower. Therefore, they can insist and impose themselves on the lender that he must receive the money. And if anything now should happen to the money, the lender is the one, actually, there's no liability to the borrower. The debt is, is fully satisfied. It's paid. No, he received it. They put it down in a, in, in, in a, a responsible location, 
And the lender says, I'm manager looking at it. No, because the witnesses, the witnesses, the witnesses, we paid the debt. What about if I go, wait, 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 no agency. I go and I go to a lender. I said, I know Ruvain owes you money. I want to pay the debt. And the lender says, I'm accepting the money on behalf of the debt. The debt is relieved. And they have two witnesses witnessing this. And now afterwards, the lender goes and says, Ruvain owes me money. My debtor owes me money. And I have two witnesses saying it was paid by a third party, and the, the, the borrower is not even aware it was paid on his behalf. Does the lender have a right to collect a debt? If I have, I have witnesses, I have evidence that there is no debt. But we have to know who they are, but they have to know who they are. We have to know who they are. Who are you? Are you giving me a gift? Who are you? No, th but that's unrelated to agency. Let's say the other uh, agent said he doesn't even know who they are. So it means nothing. It means nothing. No, of course they have to identify. They have to know. They have to t say explicitly why they're giving him the money. And he has, has, has to acknowledge it, okay, that he, he's aware that he's receiving it for that. So even if they're, they're not agents, factually, the, if they pay the debt, the debt is paid. So w why do we need shlichos? What do we need agency? I, I just uh, explained it to you. If they say explicitly, we're coming, it's our own money, we're paying the debt on behalf of so-and-so, he doesn't have the money, we're paying the, the, the debt on his behalf. Not gift. We're not giving it as a gift. But they say clearly, this is to satisfy the debt, and he accepts it. <coughs> either way, either way, either way. What do you mean you're giving it? I, I accept the gift. They say we're not giving it as a gift. So it's not the agency that makes the difference. Let's say the lender would get, the borrower would pay it. He says, I accept the gift from you. He accepts it as a gift. And the, the debtor who's paying it, a borrower comes, pays the lender. He says, I'm paying $100 that I owe. He says, I'm accepting the gift from you. Meaning he's saying, I'm not taking it as, as payment. I'm taking it as a gift. And the l one who gives it to him doesn't th remain silent. I don't know. It's not simple. It's not simple. Right. Man says, I'm taking it as a gift. I'm not taking it as payment of the debt. No, 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 no. No, it's if he said it's not a gift, it's, um, it's payment of debt. No, 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 no. You have to know who he is. Why is he paying it? He has to openly say why I'm paying it. Let's see the lender forgot about why, why the man's paying. He forgot, he forgot the man owes him money. And the man delivers money. He doesn't even know. He's giving, he says, you know, I don't accept gifts. And I'm paying you. So there's a presumption he's accepting it as, as payment. Exchange always has to take place. No, if he says that, I accept, even though there is no agency, it's relieved. Even if there's no agency, I accept the money as to, 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 to relieve the debt, if the lender says that. Let's see, we didn't give a shilling. Correct. Do you need, do you need agency? What do we need agency for? Let's say the attorney never introduced the concept of shlia, agency. The man says, I accept it as payment of debts. It's, it's, it's everything, it's finished. There's no debt any longer. The debt is relieved. What do I need? And it, it, let's say a non-Jew. I, I ask a non-Jew to pay. But what difference does it make if you call him Ruvain or you call him uh, Luke? It's the same thing. Luke or Ruvain, it's the same thing. No, so I've explained it to you. Because when you make it into a shliach, then the, l the lender has to accept the money. And if he doesn't accept the money, he, he, 
it's to the detriment of the lender. If it's a third party and he's not me, you know something? I'm preoccupied. I'm not interested right now. I'm not interested in seeing you. But if he's the borrower, then he has to, he has to accept it. And if he doesn't accept it, it's to his detriment. No, there's a difference if you represent the debtor, you are the debtor, or you're a third party doing something on behalf of the debtor. If you're the debtor, you have one content, you have one value. If you're, if you're doing something to benefit the debtor, then you're something else. It's a different reality. No, no, because the first, he had the first is a shliach. If you are the debtor, because that has different, different ramifications. The ramification is the man doesn't accept the money, the lender has no claim against the debtor any longer. Of course, the debtor is satisfied whether you wanted it or didn't want it. Of course, that, it's like the borrower wanting to pay the debt. You don't want to take the money from him. And they accept it. And they accept it. All, all the loans are... are Nobody is permission to do it. Okay. Now, Citibank has to pay for it. I am Fannie Mae. What's happening to those papers? Are they canceling the papers? They're canceling. Are they clearing up the papers? Are they giving me who gave them the money? No, well, you have to have proof because they could deny they ever received the money. You only need proof that, that, you, that you gave the money on th for that purpose. No, 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 but you, you're not being agent there. As long as they, they give me a document saying that the money that was paid satisfies all the loans, the bank has no claim against anyone any longer. Okay, so that's our question. So what do we need? To, so w w how does the agency play into this? That's where you need two people to involve. The city bank says, here are the papers, they give it to me. All right? I clear up the papers. This case here, here also, they would give you the papers to tear up. They would tear up, give you papers. I will give you five million billion dollars to relieve all, all the, de all the, all the mortgages, but I will only give it to you if you give me all the documents to destroy, so you will have no claim against any of the borrowers. You're acting, you're acting on behalf. Do you want? Are you buying? Where, where are you buying the debt? The question is, what are you doing? Are you buying the debt? No, it's the same thing. Let's no, no. Let's say a person is an agent, an agent, and he says, you know something? When I'm paying the money, I'm not paying it as an agent. I'm buying the debt. He, he in, in the middle of the road, he could change. I'm only, I'm only what I'm meant to be based on what what, what I want to be. If I wouldn't be an agent, let's say there's no agency. A Gentile goes, he says, I want to buy the paper. I want to buy the debt. Fine, no problem. He says, I'm here to pay the debt. The same, the same Gentile. Depends on what, what he's saying. Am I here to buy the debt or am I, going to, am I here to relieve the debt? But, you, but so those two situations, I know, but those, those two situations does make difference if you, whether the Torah ever introduced the concept of agency. There's no agency. Makes no difference. Right, so what do we need? We say over here that the shliach for the monetary situation, he could be the witness. What do you mean he could be the witness? What do we need agency? Right? It, it has no relevance to the laws of agency. What, what does agency add to the particular situation of the person paying the debt on behalf of the lender? That's the question. That's the question that's asked. So I'm saying the, the difference is this. The, he has to, because if the agent is the borrower, he has to accept the money. He's not the borrower, he says, I'm not, I don't. Right, exactly, exactly. So because the, 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 the one who's paying is the borrower, he must accept it. If there's no laws of agency, he doesn't have to accept it. He could tell him, come back some other time. Or I'm not interested in dealing with you. No, that's it. I mean, I'm just saying, this, I'm, I'm telling what the Chronim say. Okay? So Rava says in the name of Nachman, we have three cases. We have Kedushin, we have Gershin, and we have monetary, the payment of the debt. Now what do we need? If we say the Shlech be the agent, 
stated in one case, and I'll know the other cases. Well, we'll draw from the other. Okay? Utricho. Go ahead. It's irrelevant you learned from. It covers the full gamut. Kochim and Truma. No. No. Well, well, Truma also has to do with Mama because you have to own it. Right? If you don't know, own the grain, you, you can't tithe it. Okay? Utricho. If I would only know the case of Kedushin, where we say the Shliach is able to be the witness, the reason why he's believed is because what is he doing? The, they, they testify we actually performed the marriage on behalf of the one who sent us, so therefore she is his wife. So what are they doing? They're prohibiting her to the world by saying that. Do they have any personal gain from this? They have no gain from this whatsoever. So because they have no gain from this, that's the reason why they believed. But in regard to divorce, maybe they're only testifying that the divorce took place because one of them has their eye on her and maybe there's reason to believe that maybe the get wasn't delivered. No, that, that, that's not a problem. That's well, not a problem. Maybe, but we're well, suspecting maybe the get wasn't delivered. Uh -huh. so, so, he, he so we're saying they believe to testify. Because that's not called the conflict of interest. Okay? Same thing. Right, right, right. Where is the, where is the, where is the benefit? You're saying that there has to be a benefit for him to have an interest. No, there's he reason for him to... No, maybe the, he's the, he's suspect of lying. Now, let's ask a question. I mean, just... A, we asked yesterday a question. What about the Cheskis Kashris? I mean, why, two witnesses come and testify. Ruvim killed Shimon. What do we believe them? Right? I'm, uh, I'm quoting Rambam. What do we believe? To do? No. no. The answer is because it's a presumed status. They're not lying. Right? The kosher Jews, they're not lying. Therefore, the Torah says a Jew is a kosher Jew, and there's no reason to suspect he's lying. You must accept his testimony. Over here, what is the, what is the basis? And the Torah says two witnesses are believed regarding Gershim. Right? To testify. So why should I suspect over the line? They have a cheskis kashos. Well, you never know. So if a woman is divorced and she doesn't have that original document to prove she's divorced, how do you ever have two witnesses to say she's divorced? Maybe they're only testifying that she's divorced because they have their eye on her. I, I need Rav Nachman to tell me this. Right? I have, I have Mishnahis throughout Shas that two witnesses come and say a woman is divorced. They, they, we accept the testimony. She's divorced. So what's Rav, what's Rav Nachman adding? Right? It's a Mishnah. So the difference is here. Here, they are the ones who are delivering the get. See, if there's a question, did something take place? Is she a divorced woman or not? These people, they have to do nothing. They're just testifying about a fact. But over here, what happens if the get wasn't delivered properly? Let's say the get was lost on the way. So then the, 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 it never happened. These people, they were the ones to bring about the determination of the relationship. We're not speaking about two witnesses come and they say a woman was divorced. That's cheskis kashas. But over here, where there's reason to believe that it's not so simple to deliver a get. They're the agents. We have maybe the get wasn't delivered. So we say if there's no reason to suspect that it wasn't, the presumption is it was. But over here, because there is, it may have not. And they're only saying yes because they have what they gain. Maybe that, that, that's reason not to accept the testimony. No, 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 no. If the get was delivered, no, they were told. If they, they may have lost the get. They may have lost the get. I'll give you an example. The Mishnah says in the Elam 
No, he's not. At least he's not here. That's his parent. That's his favorite parent. You know, what happens if a person loses a get, and then afterwards somebody finds it and he gives a simon? He identifies the get. Is that the get? Because it has a hole through one of the letters. Is, is that sufficient uh, proof that that's the get he lost? We're talking about something very serious. If it's the original document, he gives that document to divorce the woman. He's the, he's the agent. He lost the get. But if it's not, then that's meaningless because that's not the original document that he was given. So you return the get to the agent who says that I lost the get and I had a hole through a particular letter. So Mara says it's called a simon muvok. That since you so, it's not you recognize it or the paper was, a, the parchment was a certain color. He, he was so accurate that he knew exactly through the base of a certain letter there was a hole. If you know that, then definitely that's a proper identification. That's called the simon muvok. Three cases. Marriage, divorce, monetary. So we're saying. The witnesses. So, does it make a difference? In people's minds? Right? There's that, that is reality. That is reality. So what? No. So what? Therefore what? Therefore what? Therefore what? He may do it. He won't be firstly. He has to be forewarned. That's firstly. He's committing adultery. No question he's committing adultery. You know, people justify it. Well, the man wants to get, the man wants to get rid of his wife in either case. The man wants to terminate the relationship. Okay, so he didn't meet all the criteria. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. She's, she's going to be, right? That, that's what it's about. People rationalize in their minds, justify things. I mean, the Gemara is going to say something differently. What are you going to say? Because factually, since they're both saying the same thing, one corroborates the other one because only one of them c could have her as, as a wife. So therefore, that's the reason why we're not uh, suspectful that, that that may be the reason why they're testifying it. That's why there's no conflict. But if not for that, the prohibition would not be sufficient reason. I'll give you an example. The Gemara says in Ksubis, if a woman says to the husband, the husband says, I never divorced you. She says, you did divorce me. She's believed. She's believed that she received the divorce. Even though we normally have to have witnesses, because the Gemara says, because ain't isha me'isa poneh b'fnei balo. A woman would not have the insolence and the arrogance to say to the husband, I am divorced when she's not divorced. She wouldn't say such a thing. So therefore she's believed. Right? Why don't you say she'd be committing adultery? It doesn't say because she'd be, she's committing adultery. Right? She's believed because a woman couldn't say to her husband, you gave me a get if actually he didn't give her a get. Nobody, uh, nobody could say have that level of arrogance. So therefore that's, we say clearly she definitely received the get. No woman could have that arrogance. Yeah, that's the point I'm sure. What's that? Because she'd be committing adultery. Right? She's, she's going to find herself another husband. She wants out of this relationship. But still, if, it would, if she'd go to the court, she'd say, Grushani, she's not believed. You hear what he says? She's not believed. The, over there, we're talking Pesha or Sepeshi. A woman comes to court. The court believes she's a single woman. And she says to the court, I was married and I was divorced. Before she said she was married, they never knew she was married. So what's the presumed status? She's Penuya. She's a single woman. She's the one who introduced the information sh that what? That, she's, that she was married. And she says, At, I was married, but, but subsequently I was divorced. What, said, how long has she believed to say she was divorced? Because what is the basis to say that she's prohibited? Yes, it's... it's it, we had to know, she, we, it all begins with her. It begins with her and ends with her. Right? I was married and I was divorced. But let's say the court knew she was married. And she comes to court, she says she was divorced. Unless she produces that document or witnesses, she's a married woman. She commits adultery and she's forewarned she's going to be put to death. But if she comes to the husband and says in the presence of the husband, you divorced me, she is believed. Because going to the court, 
she, she could, could be arrogant. But to say directly to the husband who was the one who gave it, he says, you gave it, he says, I never gave it. She says, you did. She, uh, she doesn't have to bring the document. Say, so where's the, she lost it. She's lost it. No, no. She, she it's a rel no, to the court not, but if the husband's in the court, and she says in the presence of the husband, you divorced me, she's believed. Because it's Anand Sadi. We could say with certainty, she definitely received it. Because no woman could be that arrogant. To say to the husband, I was, what about adultery? Let's talk about adultery. She should believe whether the husband's here or not. The answer is, people will commit adultery, for whatever reason. So over here, they'll say they delivered the get. In fact, she didn't deliver the get, for whatever reason. But ultimately, but they know the woman's a married woman. Right. We're not talking about other people, themselves. Okay, let's get back to the Gemara. Right? A woman could only marry one man. So if the other person is also saying the, the get was given, so if the other one corroborates one, that it's, it's clearly not because there's, there's, a, there's a marriage issue over here. It's because truly the get was, the, was delivered. So she's divorced. No, but no, but the question maybe he lost it. He may have lost it. That's the question. You know, if you read the Chuvas, you think it was so simple. One time, you know, you'd send an agent who had to deliver a get. H how did you cross a river? Sometimes you'd have to wade through the river with the get. So there's Chuvas and Nodibu, the, the get is smudged. So the question is it legible or not legible? Ma there are many issues. Uh, at the end of the day, it's something that took months to deliver a get. The get was a document that looked like a shriveled document. Is, is it still valid? So, all kinds of questions. It's not so simple. He lost it. He found it. He had two get, and did he give the right get? M multiple. Right? He, what had persons appointed multiple agents representing persons making a trip? So, m m he, he was representing multiple husbands. Did he give the right get? Did he give the wrong get? Okay, one second. Avul mamono, hey mahani mifli palgi, but money is, is is divisible. They could split it. They're saying they they paid the debt, but maybe they didn't pay the debt. Srich, therefore, you need the last case that we don't suspect that we don't suspect it. On the money, then then the first two cases, but th therefore he says he concludes it's not A, it's not B. They're accepted A, B, and even C. Even the answer, we don't suspect that. We don't suspect that. Right? We accept it. We don't. We're saying it's Lozu Apsu. We don't suspect A, we don't suspect B. And not only that, we don't even suspect C. Because we don't. Because they're witnesses. It's evidently, because they're Becheskis Kashus. Well, the Gemara is going to discuss it in a moment. The Gemara is going to discuss it in a moment. Now, very interesting. If a person lends a person money in the presence of witnesses, does he have to pay the debt, repay the debt in the presence of witnesses? Right? There's Hamalvas Chaver Abedim. Sorch Lefor Abedim, Eid Sorch Lefor Abedim. So it's, a, it's an argument. What's the argument? If, why did the lend lend make sure to lend the borrower the money presence of witnesses? Because he truly doesn't trust him. Because the man later could deny that he ever borrowed the money. So therefore, one opinion is that if a man borrows money in presence of witnesses, when he repays the debt, it has to be in presence of witnesses. Otherwise, the debt is in force. The debt is in force. Just to give you some background on this. They don't tr you don't trust me, I don't trust you. Right? You could say afterwards that, that I, you never, I never paid you. I want to have that receipt. If I don't have a receipt, you better have witnesses to witness the repayment of the debt. Interesting, Shiloh. We will halacha, hamalvas chaver beidim, ain't sarchel for beidim. Even if the lender lends in the presence of witnesses, the borrower doesn't have to repay in the presence of witnesses. Does not. No, why is it so simple? It makes sense. No, we're talking about milva peh. No, undocumented loan. Undocumented loan. 
you let me five dollars in the presence of witnesses. No, no document. When I repay the five dollars, do I have to repay in the presence of witnesses, or I'm believed that I repaid the debt? So of course we, we rule out locha. People repay debts even though they were lent in the presence of witnesses. So this is the shaila like this. If I say parati, I paid, you believed. What about if a person says, I don't recall? If a person, I don't recall if I ever paid, if I ever paid you back. What? Wait a second. Wait one second. Wait. Ruvain says I lent you a hundred dollars. <coughs> Shimon says, I don't remember that I ever borrowed. No. If he says I don't remember I ever borrowed, that's called bori v'shem bori lavodi. He doesn't have to pay, because the man is saying I don't remember if I ever borrowed. What about if he says I lent you? He says I remember I borrowed, but I don't recall if I ever paid you. Then he has to pay. Why? No, no, no. That motor makes us better than motor makes us. No, because it's called the cheskis chiyuv. You're establishing that there's a, a debt in force. Now the question: Did you absolve yourself of that debt? So we have a we have a chazoka. If you if the if the debt is in force, you have to address the debt. If the man says, "I don't remember if I ever borrowed," so that's a motzchev in The burden of proof is on on, on the make, man making the claim. Okay. We'll get back to this.